Hey, what's up everybody? Will Mosby here back with yet another DIY video. And this time we're continuing in the RV, but we are going to update. I'm going to watch my finger here. We're going to update this guy right here. This is the old stereo that came with this 2006 Forest River Flagstaff. Yeah, and just look at this thing. It's uh, Concert One. I think that's what it's called. I've never even heard of this brand before, but uh, it looks like a dinosaur. So when I pull this thing out, it's going to leave a giant hole right there. So I'm going to have to make a new front cover to accommodate this much smaller stereo. And the new stereo is this Podofo Double Den 7-inch wide Bluetooth enabled stereo that I got off of Amazon. Had a lot of good reviews. So we're going to replace the old technology with this new technology. So let's get to installing it. All right, so here's a little view of the before where all the wires terminated in that upper cabinet section. And the space down here at the bottom is just dead space, so we're just going to chop it off and get rid of it. So what a better place to do stereo stuff than at your kitchen island. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually utilize the connectors that are on the back of the unit. And check this out, it's got the wiring diagram, so now I'm going to know what wires go to what. So that's going to be helpful. Alright, so let's snip off these connectors. The first one that I need to get to is the one that goes to all the speakers. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is get my wire strippers and strip off the ends and get them ready to solder with the new wiring harness of the uh, new stereo. All right. So now we're going to get the power connector and just strip off the positive and the negative ends. All right, and here's the user manual for the Podofo showing the wiring diagram for all the speakers and the 12 volt power supply. And this is going to be overkill, but I'm going to solder the ends together, but the connector that I'm going to use that you saw me just put on is a heat shrink and it has solder also in the middle. So really all you have to do is put the wires together, put the heat shrink sleeve over the two, heat it up with the heat gun, and that's it. There's no crimping of wires, anything like that. I'll leave a link in the description of the connectors that I used. I got them from Amazon and also the soldering kit that I'm using. I also got that from Amazon. So now we're just going to go through and make all of our connections to the speakers first. You can see I finally got smart and started holding those wires with the needle nose because that heat gun gets really hot. So in my RV, it has five speakers. One, two, three, four, five. And so I'm going to have to double up on one of these because the new stereo only has four speakers, obviously, since it's meant for a car. So I'm going to pair the two front ones that are over the television. And we're going to tap those into one channel. Okay, and there's the finished wiring harness for the speaker. And for the power connector, I'm going to need to put the yellow and the red together for our 12 volt positive. And then our black cable will be our negative ground. 
Since this is a car stereo that has a backup camera, there's gonna be a lot of wires on this harness that just aren't gonna be used. So we're just gonna leave uh, the ends capped off. And that's it. Let's go connect it and see if it works. All right, so before we make the connections and test it, I want to show you how I ended up mounting the stereo and covering it. First, I couldn't find a good match for a car kit, which would work for my situation, so I had to improvise. I ended up using two 90 degree L brackets and mounting them to the top hole on the side. All these holes are threaded, so I just had to find the right screw, which I did. Next, I also had to make a little more space for the unit to fit. You can see where I had to cut out a small section on each side so the stereo would slide right in. I also had to add a small three quarter inch thick piece of wood that would act as the bottom support and prevented <clears throat> any kind of tilt. And when I mounted it, it never moved. Next, I decided to cover the entire front face with a thin piece of 1 8 inch thick Luan that I had laying around. All I had to do was cut out a hole in the exact spot where the face of the stereo would fit through. This took a little precise measuring and maybe a little luck, but I got it. This piece would end up covering that gaping hole and it would cover my mounting brackets. And to tell you the truth, the end product looked like it was meant to be there. All right, so here is the finished product. We've got it installed, got the stereo installed. And this is how I capped it off, and, and yeah, we got a little decoration on, on top. Because there's a, there was just like a, a little bit of blank space up there, and I thought, well, I'll find something. And, uh, you know, that, whoa, I'll never get it back on there. There we go. That fills the gap, you know, that just fills the space, and it looks just fine. Okay, this is the, the finished product. And just to show you that, you know, it does work, we'll turn it on. Yeah, we get a silly little splash screen right there from this uh, stereo, but it's got all the functions that we needed to do. It's got, you know, radio and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and uh, and yeah, I've got this uh, blue aux cord connected to the back of the television. So it just gives me sound uh, when we're, you know, playing the television in here. You know, something else that I forgot to mention. One, this is touch screen. So if I need to like go to the the tv that's that's the uh, auxiliary port right there and if i just want to go back home i'm not going to show you like how to use this stereo but it's nice to have touchscreen and i chose this one because it also comes with this handy dandy little remote so if we want to turn the volume up or turn the volume down or mute or change mode or whatever i can do it right here from the remote from sitting over on the couch i don't have to get up and, and go change it because the other one didn't have something like that so makes it kind of useful to have this and and uh just like you know comforts at home. We're hooked up to the antenna that's on top of the roof here and uh, that, that works pretty good you know for picking up uh, different radio stations around uh, for your local stations but this is just a little thin piece of eighth inch Luan that I kind of had laying laying around and uh, just cut that out you know for to fill this space on, on the front and then just tacked it down with some 16 gauge brad nails. You can actually see my holes. I've got to go around and just do a little touch up paint and stuff like that and, and caulk and fill those up, uh, sand it down, but that'll look good in the end. So anyway, pretty simple little project to do just to uh, upgrade the technology that was, was here in the camper uh, from some old technology uh, to this new technology and it, and it works really well. Wasn't expensive at all and it wasn't hard at all. Uh, just get the old connectors off of your your old uh, stereo and just take your time and wire it up correctly and, and everything should work out just fine. Hopefully you found this video helpful and uh, please like, share, subscribe if you're into this kind of DIY stuff and uh, leave your comments. I would love your comments on all these videos because it helps me make the next video and I would just uh, love to hear your feedback. It'd be great to hear. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.